Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working inside of Sketch and Principle. This is actually my first Principle tutorial, so I'm super excited. Just like in Flinto and Envision Studio, you can use Principle to create interactive prototypes. I tend to use Principle when I have to prototype a really intricate or detailed interaction that happens on one or a few screens. I probably wouldn't use it to prototype an entire app, but due to its level of customization, I think it's a great tool when you have a really intricate interaction to prototype. Just like Flinto, Principle integrates seamlessly with Sketch. So as you see here, I'm starting inside of Sketch actually, and I designed these three screens here. Today we're gonna to be doing a drag and drop interaction. So each of these screens kind of represents one state of this interaction. So you see the screen one, we have some photos down here, and we have some target areas in which we're going to drag these photos. So screen two represents a state in which this first photo is being picked up and dragged to this target area here. So you can kind of visualize the flow from screen to screen. I'm gonna include the sketch file as well as the principal file in the description if you guys wanna follow along with me. One thing to take note of with our design here, notice that this first photo on screen two is rotated slightly. So I just gave it a 15 degree rotation and I gave it a shadow and I'm actually just gonna scale it up a tiny bit just to make it seem like it's closer to us because when we select this photo, we want it to kind of pop off the page and we're gonna drag and drop it into this target area. So I think this is gonna make it look a little more realistic. Great, so now that our design is prepped and ready to go inside of Sketch, we can select each artboard and we can actually import to Principle. So let's head into Principle and I'm just gonna hit import and selected artboards only and we can import everything. And now you see all of our artboards are inside of Principle. So in the interest of time, I'm not gonna go over the entire user interface of Principle itself. I'm kind of just gonna get right into the animation and hopefully you guys can follow along. The first thing I'm gonna do is come over to this artboard one and this photo one over here in this photo group down here, I'm gonna just select drag for both horizontal and vertical. So now in our preview, you can see we can kind of freeform drag this picture. So that's the first step. Now in the second screen, I'm actually gonna do the same thing. Drag. Cool, so now we need a way to get from this first screen to the second screen here. So I'm gonna select this first photo again. I'm gonna hit this little lightning bolt. Let me zoom in so you guys can see a little better. I'm gonna hit this little lightning bolt and I'm actually gonna trigger this with a touch down gesture. So I'm gonna click and drag to the second screen. So now in our preview, you see when we touch down on our mouse, I can pick this photo up and freeform drag it anywhere. So one more time. Very cool, and notice how it kind of pops off the page and that shadow makes it look like it's closer to us and being picked up. And it rotates a little just to simulate that it's, it's almost like a magnet that we're picking this thing up with. That's kind of what it feels like. Now we need to make another state to get from this picked up photo to the photo that's inside the target area here. So what I'm gonna do now is select this picked up photo, hit the lightning bolt again, and this time using a touch down gesture, or sorry, a touch up gesture, we'll connect it to this state. And now you'll see in our preview, I can pick this up, I can drag it anywhere, and then when I release, it's just gonna fall right into place and everything below it, so all these photos down here, are just gonna slide over. And this is happening because the way Principle animates is it's gonna look for similar layers on different screens and just automatically animate the difference between them, sort of like in Vision Studio. But one more time, let me just show you how this works. So let's reset it. You can touch down to pick up, drag it anywhere, and then release, and it slides right into place and all these photos slide over. So perfect. So this animation is already cool as is, but I'm gonna take it a step further. What I wanna do is, whoops. What I wanna do is be able to drag this photo over one of these target areas. And as I do this, I want the target area to highlight. So as I'm hovering over one of the targets, I want it to highlight a certain color, just to indicate that it's ready to be dropped in that area. So to do this, we're actually gonna use something called drivers. To access drivers inside of principle, we just come up to the menu bar here where it says drivers. Now we have this timeline looking thing. The way we wanna think about drivers in principle 
is we select layers to drive. That's a good way to word it to yourself to help you understand the concept of drivers. So in our case, we wanna drive the fill color of these targets. So we're gonna start with this bottom left target and we're gonna drive the fill color by the Y position of this first photo. So when you come over here, we can scrub through the Y position of this first photo and we wanna drive the color of that rectangle of that background rectangle, which is named rectangle copy six. So when the Y position of this photo reaches about here, we'll say, we want the fill color of this target to start filling up a certain color. So in order to drive the fill color of this rectangle copy six, we're gonna come over here under center Y and click this icon here. And we wanna just select fill. So now a keyframe appears and this is indicating the start position of the fill. So once we reach Y position negative 14, this rectangle is gonna start filling up. But we actually wanna move it a little bit more to create a range that this rectangle is gonna fill up. And then we're gonna add a keyframe. Keyframes usually come in pairs. So what this is saying is over this distance from this keyframe to this keyframe, that rectangle is gonna fill up a certain color. So we can actually, with this rectangle copy six selected, we can come over here to where it says fill. And let's just make this like a light purple color. So now let's go back to the beginning. So around here, and we can preview this live. So let's just reset this. We tap on this photo, we pick it up, and we can drag it over this target. And once we're hovering over it, it turns purple. And once we hover off, it goes back to white but I wanna continue dragging this up to the top left. So when I drag off of that target, I want it to go back to white. So let's do that now. So as I scrub through the Y position again, we'll see that at this point, the target area is purple. It's gonna stay purple up until about here where it's mostly off of that target. So at this point, we're gonna add another keyframe Sorry, add another keyframe here. And then we're gonna add its pair about here for when it's like completely off or pretty much completely off that target. And we'll add another keyframe. And this keyframe, we're gonna select that layer and we're just gonna make it white again. So now as I scrub through, we'll see it starts here. We get to a point where it starts turning purple. Now it stays purple over this duration and then up until the last keyframe, it turns back white. So we can preview this live now. So we drag, it turns purple at this point, it's purple up until about here, and it goes back white. And at this point is when we want the other, this top left target to highlight purple. So let's do that part now. So in order to do this, we actually need to select a different layer to drive. So in this case, it's gonna be the background of this top left target. So let's select that layer and we're going to drive the fill color of this one as well. So this is called rectangle copy three. So let's select this icon again, select fill and a keyframe appears, but let's put this keyframe. Remember we said we want it to occur right about here. So this is the point for, this is the point when this layer is going to start turning purple. So let's add another keyframe about here, like so. And now here we can just change the color of this layer to that same purple. And I had just copied the hex code earlier, so there it is. So let's just preview this. So we, we start here, we become purple, it's purple over this range and now that first target is going to become white and when that becomes white the other one becomes purple and that's just going to be the end of the interaction because I'm going to release this photo at this point so let's preview this in real time pick up the photo whoops when that happens we have to make sure this is starting at the, the right position so we'll bring it down here to simulate the start position so let's preview again Tap on the photo, pick it up, drag over this first target, turns purple, and we reach a certain point, it goes back to white, 
and the new one turns purple. And now we can just release and drop it. So one more time, let's select the photo and we can hover over these target areas and the highlight color changes accordingly. And we can just drop it into place. I know I skimmed over some things and this wasn't the most robust walkthrough of principle, but just look out for future videos. And I like to learn by doing, and I think that's the best way to teach you guys as well. So I'm just gonna give you some practical examples of how to use principle and its features. And you guys will pick up some nuggets of information along the way. But yeah, that's been it. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, comment with what you wanna see next, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.